Right, the final two transatlantic races coming up a little later, but for the moment we switch to the 750cc Metzler production race for ordinary street bikes. These are the sort of things you and I could go and collect from the shop floor. No tuning up permitted, and the man to catch should be Richard Scott, the New Zealander. I know you're going to be hearing more about him now from Chris Carter and Peter Clifford with the race already underway. They're on their second lap now, and uh, the leader's already going through. As Kenny was saying, these are production machines, just the sort of thing you can get from your local dealer. And uh, they're plugging Richard Scott. Uh, Peter, do you think he's going to do it? Well, he's already went past us. He's already up into fourth place, yes, and uh, it's his first race, of course, at this Donington Park circuit, and he is in fourth place, closing on the leading group there. Number two, Richard Scott on the standard VFR 750 Honda. He comes here with a wealth of experience from uh, Australia and New Zealand. He's twice winner of the Australian Castrol Six Hour Race, the biggest production race in the world. And it's John Swinkler, uh, our local man, I think, in the lead at the moment. And really, this has been a memorable meeting for John Swingler. In fact, it starts, it's uh, Dave Hill, and all credit to the young Coventry boy, Dave Hill is the man who leads the race at the moment in second place and just contesting the lead is Ken Dobson another New Zealander on another VFR 750 Honda and Dave Hill and Ken Dobson disputing the lead remember these are production motorcycles Richard Scott in third place as they went through there very very closely uh, comparable machine and it's Dobson who's got a wheel in front of Dave Hill, Richard Scott there, looking to come tighter. Oh, and he almost paid the penalty for the tighter line. He wanted to accelerate sooner to put him in front of Dave Hill, but he couldn't do it. Well, Dave Hill, there is John Swingler, 119. We've seen him uh, in action in the Superbike series over the weekend at Dunnington Park, and he's had a great weekend so far, and he's doing very well here. The race leader, though, 92, Ken Dobson, two laps completed in second spot. Number 165, Dave Hill from Coventry. There is John Swingler in fourth position just behind Richard Scott. And in fifth position at the moment is uh, 119. In fact, uh, Trevor Nation there, number five, getting in on the act. This is Trevor Nation who's in the fifth spot. Well, this is the second year of the Metzler production series and uh, it's good to see that production machine racing has been taken more seriously in Britain. It's been uh, supported very much at club level and now it's beginning to make an impact on the national scene. Yes, and we see Scott moving to second place. He overtakes the Suzuki and now it's a Honda 1-2 now. Scott running wide as he passes the third place man to take second place. And the all style of Richard Scott carries him through to uh, second spot but I don't think Dave Hill will uh, necessarily give up the battle Hill are looking for the inside line almost goes up the back of Richard Scott Scott there number two in second place and I think come on Peter you've got to admit there's a slight bias in the commentary here you are in fact looking after Richard Scott yes that's right I've uh, watched Scott ride several times in Australia and New Zealand and uh, he's a very likeable character, as is uh, Ken Dobson, another Kiwi. So these two Kiwis have come over here. They've come an awful long way to go racing. They're both very, very enthusiastic. And I'm very keen to see anyone who's travelled halfway around the world to compete in uh, races in England succeed. And both of these men doing it now. Dobson followed by Scott. Here they come. Five riders in line with Ken Dobson, the race leader. Richard Scott, number two, in second spot. In third position, David Hill. Behind David Hill is 119, John Swingler. And the fifth man bringing up the tail of this quintet is Trevor Nation. So two Colonials in the lead. And Scott takes over the running. Scott slides past Dobson there. A very neat overtaking manoeuvre. Great riding from both of these two men on the uh, brand new 750 Hondas. That's uh, three Suzuki's behind them. You can see spots of rain on the camera lens there. It's uh, presumably we've got another shower of rain and uh, these are production motorcycles. They're not racing bikes and they're not very forgiving in the wet weather, Peter. 
Well, they, uh, the thing is that they now they have production road going tyres, so there's no excuse for a wrong choice of tyres. And uh, both Scott and Dobson are well experienced wet weather men, and uh, both race production bikes in the wet, so they really shouldn't know what they're doing as long as they see that it's raining, of course. It could catch them unawares. And a change because Dave Hill has lost another position, and he looks as though he's going to lose fourth place as well. Scott is the leader from Ken Dobson. And a real shuffle around behind. John Swingler there in third place. Trevor Nation fourth and Dave Hill in fifth position. Scott out in front. 92, Ken Dobson in second place. And a really hectic battle in for third place now. Almost side by side. Trevor Nation trying to go through on the inside of Dave Hill. And they sprint side by side up the hill with Dave Hill having the better line it almost puts termination on the grass and nation goes round the outside well, well Dave Hill uh, a young man from Coventry he's uh, established himself very much on the production scene used to race at BMW and he raced back to good effect Richard Scott the race leader Dobson, Ken Dobson in second place John Swingler third Trevor Nation fourth and Dave Hill in fifth spot Scott having a little bit of a weave there as he found a damp patch, but mostly Scott has a beautifully smooth style, as does Dobson. And uh, Scott unable to get away from Dobson. These two bikes identical, the only difference is the tyres. Scott using Pirelli's on the front and in, uh, in front on number two, and Dobson with the Metzler tyres. So that's the only real difference between the two bikes. And there is John Swingler, his race is over, taken a tumble, so one of the top five men out of the race. And that really is sad news for the 30-year-old Nottingham man. This is the battle for the lead. Oh, and Ken Dobson tried to go through, and he takes Ken Dobson, he takes the Richard Scott. And obviously the rain making life very difficult. And there's Richard Scott, so Richard Scott out, the two leaders gone. We'll see the incident again, Peter. Dobson decides to go up the inside of Scott and loses it right here. The as he pitches over, the front end just tucks under. Scott has nowhere to go. There's Dobson and the bike sliding. He has to pick it up and head for the grass. And, of course, the grass is wet. He cannot possibly turn it round before he hits the soft sand, and he goes down as well. And suddenly, from five rider there, they're talking to each other, one slightly muddier than the other. Well, they're taking it very well indeed. Uh, I suppose New Zealanders don't really get excited about very much do they Peter? Well they're pretty easy going folk and it's just as well they are in this instance isn't it? Absolutely so three of the top five men have gone and that means that Trevor Nation here is the leader and Dave Hill who was fifth suddenly finds himself in second position. And Nation now well out in front on the Suzuki, going from a Honda-dominated race, it's now gone to a Suzuki-dominated race, and the two GSXR 750 Suzuki is well clear of the field now. Well, Barry Sheen, you remember all about Dave Hill, don't you? I do. He uh, worked for me as a mechanic for all oh, on and off for a couple of years, and he was always a keen little young guy, and uh, he uh, left to start racing and then he started racing and couldn't afford it and then he got back into it and it was worth coming back because he's going really well. So Dave Hill carving out a racing career of his own after starting in very illustrious company. As a mechanic for number seven. Dave Hill there has been working uh, over the past few months as a, a motorcycle repairman and serviceman for Coventry Police Force. That has a certain amount of irony about it too. So Dave Hill in second place behind Trevor Nation. And these 750 Suzuki's are very similar to the bike which Kevin Schwantz has been doing a lot of winning in the Transatlantic series. These are the production road bikes. This is what you buy. Then you spend another 10 or 16,000 pounds to turn them into the sort of motorcycle that Kevin Schwantz is riding. But they start off being fundamentally the same motorcycle. And in fact, uh, David Hill's sponsor is the same sponsor who has provided the bike that Kevin Schwann has been racing. That's the uh, motorcycle mart. And there you see Trevor Nation finding that the track is still a little bit slippery. 
As I say, David Hill's bike from the Motorcycle Mart in Kidderminster, and they're the people who very kindly provided uh, the bike that Kevin Schwantz has been racing to such a devastating effect in the Transatlantic Challenge. Six laps completed, two more laps to go, and Trevor Nation, the race leader, Dave Hill in second place. In the third spot now, after all that disaster, moves number 17, that's Jeff Johnson from uh, up in the northeast. Well, Jeff Johnson knows all about production cycle racing. And in fourth place is 140, Eric McFarlane. Here's the battle for third and fourth place. Jeff Johnson, one-time motorcycle dealer, and all sorts of uh, jobs in his time, but he can ride a production bike, can't he, Peter? Yes, he can. This is another VFR 750 Honda. These bikes have only been out um, a couple of months, and they're proving instant success on the racetrack. Um, and I'm thinking one of, the, one of them would have run, but for the uh, accident to Dobson and Scott. But uh, this is uh, Jeff Johnson on another machine in third place, doing a very smooth job. He's a couple of times TT winner, and he knows all about smooth riding. This is the, the new uh, 750 from the Honda factory out this year, Peter. Yes, it's uh, a very, very nice machine. It's a very much uprated 750 Honda, a completely different frame to what they've used before, directly developed from their World Championship winning uh, Grand Prix and Formula One bikes with a, a twin spar aluminium frame, a really beautiful job, and it obviously works. Jeff Johnson then in third place, old, holding off the challenge from number 140, Eric McFarlane in the the lead, though, of course, is still Trevor Nation, and behind him, young Dave Hill. Eric McFarlane in the picture, in fourth position, and Jeff Johnson there beginning to open up the gap, and McFarlane looks over his shoulder to see who's in fifth place, and in fifth spot at the moment, number 42, Gordon Allard. Well, Gordon Allard's a, uh, a well-known character from both the classes like the Marlborough Clubman Series and the Pro-Am Championship. Yes, Alec's uh, a pretty fiery rider. I've seen him do some spectacular things, but he's obviously got, the, got it sorted out on his production bike now. We're looking at 140, Eric McFarlane, the man who lies in fourth position at the moment. And there is the race leader, Trevor Nation, battling through. Trevor Nation, a very, very talented man. In many ways, Trevor Nation is a little bit of a mystery to, uh, or at least there's a bit of a mystery about Trevor Nation, should I say, not so much he is a mystery. A lot of enthusiasts, journalists even, can never quite understand why Trevor Nation has not had factory support, Peter. Yes, he seems to do everything but be in the right place at the right time. He has the talent, he's beautifully smooth, rarely makes mistakes, he gets results, he does everything that he possibly can on a very, very small budget, and yet perhaps his face doesn't fit, he doesn't have the film star looks or something, he doesn't speak to the right people, he doesn't ingratiate himself perhaps with the right people and uh, he remains a privateer. Abundant talent and uh, still a privateer when that factory machine is given away to other folks. So uh, Trevor Nation uh, once again putting forward the best possible argument for him to have some uh, extra special motorcycles and that's my winning races and he's winning this one quite comfortably. Still there in second place, and uh, oh, and Trevor Nation. We said he doesn't make any mistakes. You need to prove you're wrong there, Peter. He very nearly did, and we can see there's some drops of rain, and I saw even a couple of specks of snow, and that may have been what caught things out, or perhaps uh, a loose loss of concentration. Trevor's been out on his own now for about five laps with nobody to look at, and uh, he nearly let it slip away from him at the last moment. Trevor Nation then. is six years of age from Shipton Bellinger, one of the uh, team in the Transatlantic Challenge. Been scoring a few points in that, but uh, two more laps to go then. This is the end of the eighth lap, and uh, Trevor Nation just carving his way past uh, Paul Goddard, who's uh, not exactly got his act together in this particular event. This is the opening round of the Metzler Production Championship, the Zeb 50 class, and uh, Nation starting as he means to go on. 
and the bike that Nation's riding, as we said, is the uh, 750 Suzuki, and it just shows what a beautiful motorcycle this is, because it is successful in all sorts forms of competition. It's winning the production race here absolutely standard. Mick Grant used one to win last year's Super Stock Series, which was in a slightly modified form, and then the full modifications uh, that are, are allowed to uh, let Kevin Schwantz win a lot of the transatlantic races, so it's a really superbly developed bike. So, Trevor Nation on the way, barring misfortunes or mistakes, to a victory in this opening round of the Metzler Series. Mixing amongst the traffic, but he shouldn't have any problems here. He's got more than 20 seconds advantage but it's pretty thick ahead of him and of course one thing that's very difficult to, in the wet is to suddenly change line and if one of these tail enders was to move over at the wrong moment which they can easily do Trevor could find himself in trouble so he's got to uh, pick his moment to pass as he's got so much time in hand and Nation picking his way through the mobile chicane at the Essers now this is going to be even more difficult I think because the condition that the hairpin are not good you can see, you can see plates of snow. It might have done his concentration a bit of good, actually, giving him somebody to overtake. And uh, up to his concentration level, couldn't make things easier in that respect. Trevor Nature coming through. End of the ninth lap, one more lap to go. There was a time only a couple of years ago when production bikes, when they were raced, all they did was wobble, weave and slide around the circuit. But it just shows you how road machines have improved, that these bikes can be lent over uh, almost at the same angle as racing machines. You can brake hard, you can accelerate hard, and they do virtually everything a racing bike does. And this, of course, is all credit to uh, classes like the superbike racing in America that we've seen here used as a basic formula for the Transatlantic Challenge for things like uh, the MTN EBC Superstock series, which again uh, persuaded the manufacturers to improve the quality of road going motorbikes. Yes, there's the old adage that racing improves the breed, and we're seeing the perfect example of it now, the GSXR 750 Suzuki, which is very much a racing bike that you can use to ride on the road. Trevor Nation then on the Suzuki, well on the way to victory, in this opening round of this national production championship more than 20 seconds clear of Dave Hill in second place and he can't see it because they're a long, long way behind. And uh, Nation then going to win this one. No problem at all. And a long, long way behind is Dave Hill. So Dave Hill will finish in second place. And that's a good ride. Trevor Nation then the winner. So join us again after the break for more transatlantic action here at Donington.